My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Once again, our seventh season of Sonic Summerstock Playhouse presents classic theatre, adapted and performed by some of the very best audio players and producers from around the world. I'm David Alt, and with Jack Ward, we are your hosts. Welcome to the 2017 Summerstock Playhouse. Here in the Playhouse, we have the incredible opportunity to explore the wide variety of shows from the days of old-time radio, and this evening's feature is no exception. John Bell is no stranger to the Playhouse, and he returns again with his take on the classic Damon Runyon Theatre the light-hearted gangster series by the author whose style produced such hits as Guys and Dolls and Little Miss Marker with Shirley Temple. So prepare to be amazed as John Bell, in his own unique style, takes on multiple roles with the aid of Sarah Golding in tonight's feature. So, spotlight if you please, and raise the curtain for Damon Runyon Theatre's Madame Le Gimp on the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse stage. The Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. This one, the famous Madame Le Gimp. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. One night I am standing at the corner of 50th and Broadway, just minding my own business. When along comes Dave the dude in a taxi, he spots me, and the next thing I know, I am in the cab with him and headed for someplace. Naturally, I could refuse to go with him, but nobody ever refuses Dave anything unless they wish his Sunday punch. So there I am, started on one of the craziest things that ever happens on Broadway. As I say, Dave the Dude gets me in the cab with him. We drive clear to the east side to a row of knocked out tenements. Now, it is very puzzling to me why Dave is taking me here, but he says nothing until we get out and walk up 1,900 flights of stairs. While we are climbing up and up, Dave says, It's on the top floor. What is? And why? We should hit snow pretty soon. You know Madame Le Gimp? The old doll that hangs around the theaters, selling two-day-old newspapers and tired flowers from the undertaker's parlor? So what? We're gonna see you. Oh, I see. Well, that explains everything. Here we are. This is it. If she is not at home, after we have climbed this mountain... She's home, all right. I brought her back from the hospital. Hospital? Yeah, she tries to knock herself off last night. And I wish to see why. Maybe she tries it again. There is no answer to your knock. Come on. <laughs> Madam. Hey, Madam Legamp. Where is the light? Uh, there's a gas jet right there. Light it. Yes, this is real old-fashioned. Look, Dave. There she is. Madam. Hey. Madame Le Gimp, she is sleeping with her eyes open. Maybe she... Hey, Madame! <sighs> Madame, look, it's Dave. Dave and Broadway. <sighs> I dare you, Broadway. Uh, you scared us for a minute. What is the idea? Please, 
Please, just go away. Let me alone. We're gonna help you. Broadway and me. You got that? We're here to help you. Nobody can help me. Nobody. Now will you please go away? Go away. That is no way to speak to anybody that comes all this way, madam. Take it easy. Uh, I'm sorry. You're really nice people. They should have let me die. They should have let me die. Dave, I think it is better if we just sit down and let her get this cry over with. Until she does, we are going to get nothing out of her. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, we wait. So there we sit for half an hour while Madame Legimp pours out the moisture. Then she clears up. We ask a couple of questions, and what she tells us is this. Dave, hand me that big envelope. Uh, this one? Yeah. Look at this photograph. This is a real classy-looking young doll. <laughs> Doesn't look much like her mother, does she? How do we know? we never seen her mother. You're looking at her Right now. You? Me. What are you giving us? I don't blame you for not believing it. That's my daughter, Eulalie. Eulalie, huh? Okay, maybe you'd better do some more talking. She was raised in Spain, where I came from. I haven't seen her since she was a little baby. Why not? Why not? I wanted her to be a lady. I took all the money I had in the world and sent her to Spain. It was 15 years ago. You? With money? Here. Look at these. They're a little faded, but you get the idea. Uh, These photographs look like you. They are. I was a dancer then. The toast of Broadway. Yeah, You can't say anything, can you? I don't blame you. It's a pretty long way from those to this... What happened to you? You can see the whole thing for 15 cents in any old night flop movie. Make a million, spend a million. The only trouble is the years don't wait for you to keep counting on tomorrow. Always tomorrow. Yeah, I see, but last night you tried to knock yourself off. Yeah, why, madam? You hold out for all these years, then suddenly you try to put your light out? You Eulalie is coming here. So? After 15 years, you see her. Why try to... After 15 years, she sees me. Me? Take a good look, Broadway. Dave, what do you see? Huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I thought. And she's gonna be married. Married to the son of one of the oldest families in Spain. Well, swell. Then we have a happy ending. Yeah, sure. Only they're all coming over here to see me. They're on their way now, and when they see me, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? Think they'll let their son marry a girl whose mother is Madame Le Gimp? <laughs> There is more talk, and it turns out that Eulalie thinks her mother is a society doll, married to a guy with plenty of potatoes. It seems that when Madame Le Gimp writes to Eulalie, she uses stationery of a real fancy apartment building called the Marbury. This is because she swipes the stationery when she does odd jobs there, like cleaning up and things. Well, we get her promises. She will try no more funny business. Then we get outside... And Dave says, Broadway, what are we gonna do? Do? What is there to do? Seems to me that she has got herself into a jam. Let's get her out of it. Short of waiting for the boat to come in and knocking off the people she does not want to see her, how do we get her out of the jam? She says her daughter believes she is a society doll who lives at the Marbury. So? Also, she tells you lately she has got a wealthy husband. She exaggerates more than somewhat, hmm... Aha! You solved the whole problem. Good night, Dave. Now, wait a minute. I'm getting an idea. You are? What? Do you know Judge Henry G. Blake? I do. Furthermore, he is no judge and never was. He looks like one. In fact, he looks like a wealthy husband should look, doesn't he? 
Well, sure. He wears a wing collar and stuff. So what? He is gonna be Madam's husband. Ho, 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 ho. The judge will break away from the starting gate if you tell him that. Tell him anyway. I have him on my books for a grand. I will cancel the bet. What? But... But the rest of the story, the Marbury... I have connections. Now look, you locate Judge Henry G. Blake. Tell him I want to see him. Where will I find him? The chances are ten to one. You'll find him at Durrell's Billiard Parlor, putting the trim to a sucker. Ah, good shot, my man. Good shot. Hello, Judge. Ah, good evening, Broadway. Nine ball, corner pocket. Judge, I have got to talk to you. Not now, I'm busy. Beat it. Dave the Dude sends me. Dave? I am temporarily out of funds. Tell him... He will cancel the grand you owe him. Cancel? You'll cancel it? Um, I have a sucker lined up for a killing, uh, but since it's for Dave, I'll be back in a minute, my good man. Now, what's all this about, Broadway? I think you'd better sit down first, Judge. Why? Is uh, that something wrong? Not yet. So, my dear Broadway, will you please come to the point? Sure. You know Madame Le Gimp. Ah, that old, uh, uh... How would you like to be married to her? Ma- married? I, I, you're insane! Dave the Dude wishes it. This is extortion! I'll see a lawyer! I do not think you will get that far. No, 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 no! Anything but that! Tell Dave I'll get him the money. I'll go to work. At what? I I don't love the woman. In fact, my feelings are just the opposite. Look, Judge, all you have to do is be your husband for a couple of days. Just uh, make believe. Even the thought of that appalls me. Broadway, look at me. I'm an educated man. I'm sensitive. Cultured. Excuse me. My feelings must be considered. I think Dave the Dude will consider them, Judge. And maybe you will not like it. But I... I... The point is well taken. All right, Broadway. Please explain. But gently. I'm a very nervous man. The little talk ends up with the judge agreeing to the proposition. What else is there for him to do? Then we go back to see Dave the Dude. He's at his place with Madame Le Gimp when the judge and I walk in. And the scene is as follows. Broadway tells you what the pitch is, Judge. Ah, yes. I'm thoroughly acquainted with the situation. Good. You know Madame Le Gimp. Yes, yes, yes. How do you do, Madame? Dave, I want to go home. I want to get out of here. Why? What do you think? It'll never work, not in a million years. I think she has a point there, Dave. Well, it's been nice seeing you, madam. Sit down. All right, Dave. Now, you listen to me. The boat gets in day after tomorrow. You got that long to get used to the idea. Such short notice. He's right, Dave. Look at me. Take a good look at me. What chance have I got? The one we'll give you. It's no good, I tell you. You want you, Laylee, to marry the citizen you tell us about? I want her to be happy. Okay, but if she gets here with her ever-loving in-laws-to-be, and they lamp you, what happens? Don't, Dave, please. Don't. Uh, Take it easy, Dave, huh? Well, I didn't mean to hit you over the head, madam. May I have a drink? No. No. But if I'm going to be her husband, perhaps some liquid courage would... Not a drop until this is over with. And that's that. When I was a small boy, I wanted to be a sailor. I certainly miss the ocean now. Well, well, well. Hello, all. Billy. Come on in. Thank you. Judge, this is my wife's hairdresser. How do you do? Charmed. What's eating ham? Nothing yet. Billy, this here is Madame Le Gimp. I told you about her. Oh, how do you... Oh, my... God. Billy, Broadway, come in the next room with me. Judge, 
You talk to Madame Legim. What about? Your honeymoon, you dope. Sweet mother of pearl. Come on, Billy. Broadway. Dave, when you told me about her, I didn't expect what I saw. She is no rose geranium. That is beside the point. Billy, are you able to do anything with her? Sure, but I'll get arrested. Don't be funny. Funny? You're the hysterical one? Get her fixed up. How? Oh, I don't know. Maybe your beauty parlor? The boss would kill me if I dragged her there in broad daylight. Then take her at night. She takes 15 years getting like that, and you give me two days to make her over. Look, Billy, she's a poor old doll with nothing in the world but that kid of hers. What do you care? What's your stake? Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Never thought about it. Guess I ain't got any steak. Not that anybody can see. Huh? You are a nice guy, Dave. Oh, you let that get out on the stem and I'll cook you. <laughs> sure. Okay, Dave. For you. But, ooh, I don't promise any Cinderella from that cinder. With that, we break up. Billy takes over Madame Le Gimp. I take over Judge Blake with orders to keep him in line. Personally, I think the whole thing is going to be a bust. There are just two days to get ready, and from what I see of Madame Le Gimp, we need two years. Nevertheless, we go through with it, and what happens when we do is something for the books. Well, it is finally the morning when the boat is due to arrive. I do not see Madame Le Gimp because I am too busy steering the judge along the right trail. Then we get a call to go to the Marbury Apartments. The judge reaches for some courage and I slap his hand, and we are off. And at the Marbury, Dave lets us in an apartment. Well, how do you like it? Oh boy, this is a classy joint. Ah, uh, where's my Yankee uh, wife? Be here in a minute, Judge. Billy's bringing her. Dave, on whom did you put the chill for this place? A guy who lives here lends it to me. He is away for the summer. Who is it? That's the right place, Dave. Is that you? Sure. Come on in. Okay. Get ready. Billy, what's the idea of stalling like that? Where's... Oh. Hey, hey, look at that. Well, close your mouths, gentlemen. You all look like something from the aquarium. Billy, Billy, what did you do to her? This, this, this is impossible. Broadway, I didn't have a drink, did I? Not a drop. Oh, Judge. Broadway, won't you sit down? At this point, it is not so much a choice. As a necessity. Thank you. Billy, you are a genius. Uh-uh. What you're looking at was there all the time. Just covered up. Madam, may I offer you a chair? Thank you, Judge. Uh, Henry. The name is Henry. Look, we got a half an hour to get down to the pier. Oh, yeah, we got to get moving. Uh. I can't go. No, I can't go. What? Adam, you gotta go. I'm scared. Oh, Broadway. Dave, I I'm scared. I know something will happen to ruin everything. Oh, please, before it's too late, let's stop this. Honey, believe me, you got nothing to be scared of now. How will I act? What will I say and do? Madam, if you will permit me to offer my arm, we shall face this thing together. Shall we go? I personally do not go to the pier, but they tell me later that the meeting between Madame Le Gimp and her baby is very effective indeed, and the judge does himself proud. Although there is talk that he takes advantage of numerous small excuses to kiss Eulalie, who is a very good-looking young doll. The thing goes off real good because Eulalie's future in-laws speak no English, and only Madame Le Gimp speaks Spanish. Everybody gets back to the Marbury with everything nice and rosy. It begins to look like a cinch, but Dave does not leave it at that. 
He says he is going to throw a big reception with a lot of celebrities to show the in-laws to be what a big shot Madame Le Gimp is. Where he is going to get these celebrities, I do not know. And I do not like the idea. But Dave tells me to show up at nine, and I am Johnny at the rat hole on the dot. I hear the party going on, and after I knock on the door, it is opened by Dave. Aha! I was a little worried you wouldn't show up, Your Honor. My Honor? I bring somebody with me? Shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present His Honor, the Mayor of New York. Dave, did you find yourself extricated from your rocker? Look, we're gonna have celebrities. I am not the mayor. I never run for mayor. I do not think I am the people's choice. But tonight, you are. We gotta convince these in-laws that Madame Le Gimp is a gold-plated mother-in-law for their son. Dave, this is dangerous. What if they find out different? You worry too much. I will introduce you to the in-laws later. Meantime, go over and talk to Harry the Horn. Sure, sure. I will sit real close to a window. Hello, Harry. Hey, Harry. Huh? Oh, who are you? Me. Who do you think I am? Remember me? Who are you tonight? Oh, the mayor. <laughs> I am one up on you. I am the governor. <laughs> Dave makes me into politics real sudden. <laughs> oh, no. You are the governor? Ladies and gentlemen, the vice president of the United States. Vice president? That is little Mitchie. And look who comes in after him. And the police commissioner of the city of New York. Police commissioner? Harry, that is none other than Wild William Wilkins, who is now wanted in 48 states. And if we had 49, that would be included. Uh, Broadway. Why? I, I wonder if I stay in line, could I really get to be the governor? Huh. Well, in two hours, the apartment has more celebrities than any place in the world. And I admit that things go pretty good. There are a couple of disturbances, like when somebody spots the police commissioner rolling a pair of phony dice in a friendly crap game, and two 45s fall out of the vice president's waistband. Then it is coming on about one in the morning, and the party is almost over. I am sitting by Madame Le Gimp and the judge, and the scene is as follows. Yes, yes, indeed. I do think it was fun. It's all been so wonderful. You've all been so wonderful. Oh, tut, tut, my dear. It's been a great pleasure. Sure, we are glad to do it for you, madam. <laughs> and it looks like everything is fine with your baby and the young guy. She'll go back to Spain with him, believing I'm what you've all made me for two days. My dear, we made nothing of you that wasn't already there. I kiss your rose petal-like hand. Please, don't. But you're very lovely. Very lovely. You know, she is at that. I'm going to tell you something. If I can, I'm going to be different. Do you think I can? I'm sure of it. As for myself, well, I've wasted a good many years, too. You know, I, uh... I wonder if we, uh... Hey, why is everybody so quiet all of a sudden? Look, coming in the door. Harrigan. Lieutenant Harrigan and a squad of gendarmes. Oh, no. No. It can't happen now. It just can't. It is. Well, well, well. I've never seen anything like this outside a visiting day at Sing Sing. Harrigan, how did you get in here? Me badge. It gets me in places. Mitzi, stand still. You too, Wilkins. Harrigan, lay off, will you? Lay off for the night. Yeah, sure. Huh. I thought I was getting a phony tip about you, citizens, but it looks like it was on the level. Harrigan, you do not understand. You're right, I don't. But that does not bother me in the least. My dear lieutenant. All in the big time, aren't you, Judge? 
pool tables are more in your line. Harrigan, shut up! Take it easy, Judge. Judge, beat it! No! I won't leave! Okay, stay. Now somebody explain what's going on. I said explain. What's the pitch? What banks are gonna get knocked over tomorrow? From the looks of this crowd, I'd say the United States Mint was in for a bad time. Now start talking. Start talking or I'll jug every one of you. Most of you would have a tough time beating any rap. Okay. Let's all go for a ride. No, wait, Lieutenant. Madam, sit down. Madam, get back. It's okay. Don't say a word. I want to. And who are you? You know me. Take a better look. Madam... No, this is silly. Yes, Madame Le Gimp. Madam, think of what you are doing. I am. Maybe I knew all along that this wouldn't work. Maybe I knew something had to happen. Is someone going to tell me what this is all about? Yes. This is a party for me and my daughter and her fiancé. Your what? And her who? My daughter. Yes, I have a daughter, Lieutenant. That's her, looking at me now, looking at me. She speaks very little English, Lieutenant, but she'll understand enough of this to know what I really am. And those other people, with the other mother and father of the boy she was going to marry. Cut it out before it's too late, madam. It is too late, Dave. Lieutenant, all those people here tonight came because of me, not because they were breaking the law. And Madam Le Gimp tells the whole thing. Eulalie is looking at her. And I know by her face that she gets quite a bit of what goes on. And the young guy does too. But his mother and father do not know one word. They just sit and look more than somewhat puzzled. Then Madame Le Gimp finishes. Now, Lieutenant, you got the whole story. Is this on the level? Take my word for it, Harrigan. Yours is the only one I would take, Broadway. What happens now, Harrigan? Well, Dave, I... I get all the good assignments. Oh, one more like this and I'll turn in my shield. Ah, Lieutenant, uh, what does that mean? Well... Well, to make this look good, you'd better introduce me to the folks. Sure, sure. As what? You've got just about all the big names taken. Uh, make me any celebrity. Sure, come on over. Senor, Senora, I have the honor to present a great celebrity, Lieutenant Harrigan, New York Police Force. And that is that. The party is over, but not the story. The next day... Harry the Horse, Little Mitzi, Angie the Ox, and several others and me are sitting in Mindy's when in walks Dave the Dude and sits down. He says as follows. Well, it is all over, boys. Well, what happens, Dave? They are married. They eloped. The young guy is nuts about you lately and does not care who her mother is. His mother and father know from nothing. Well, well. That is real nice. Also, the judge and Madame Le Gimp are married. Well, that is much better than real nice. So everything is settled. Not quite. Not quite settled. Huh? What do you mean, Dave? I have here a list of some things. Uh, a list? Of what? If every single article listed here is not kicked back to the owners of the different joints in the Marbury they were taken from by next Tuesday night, I will bust a lot of noses around this town. Everything must be returned. Especially the baby grand piano that is removed from apartment 9D. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Madame Le Gimp. Featuring Sarah Golding as Madame Le Gimp and John Bell as everybody else. Story adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. This has been a John Bell Creative LLC production.
And that's this week's performance for the 2017 Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, performances, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders, and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society podcast and Electric Vicuna Productions. Any shows that continue their run must have explicit permission from all parties involved. The Playhouse theme was written and performed by Sharon B. Join us next week at the Playhouse for another classic performance. I'm your announcer, David Alt. Good night. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Hello, I'm John Bell of Bells in the Bat Free. It's a comedy podcast. Fridays and every other Sunday. Well, anyway, back in episode five of Bells in the Bat Free, we introduced the cowlets, tiny little cows. Where did all these cats come from? They're not cats, they're cows, and they're heading toward the water cooler. Stop it before... Now you can display your love of these tiny cows with genuine cowlet t-shirts. You know what's really fun to do with these shirts? Get a whole bunch of people to buy them. Then you all gather together and run down the street. People will see these cowlets coming toward them and think it's a stampede. You think that would really work, Brad? Shh, I'm pushing for bulk sales here. You can also get cowlet mugs, clocks, and other items. Just go to thebatfree.com and click on shop. This is a limited time offer. No, it's not. You just do not not understand advertising, do you? Get your merchandise today with the official Cowlet design created by Jeff Music. Buying lots of them would bring music to my ears. Oh, stop. Stop.